quick revision video on the properties of transition elements. So we'll start with the electronic configuration of the atoms. So there's the 10 um, 3D block elements, scandium through to zinc. So we'll just look at the electronic configuration in sort of full uh, subshell configuration, noble gas configuration, and the electron in box version. So scandium looks like this, and the examiners don't mind which way around you write 3D and 4S. So titanium, I'll just run through until we get to chromium. So chromium, you would expect the, the 3D4 configuration, whereas in fact, it promotes one of the 4S electrons up to 3D, so we get a 3D5 4S1 configuration. So then the pattern picks up again until we get to copper, where it does a similar thing to chromium. So instead of being um, 3D9 4S2, it promotes one of the 4S electrons, so we get 3D10 4S1. And then zinc finishes off the pattern like that. So if we look at the ions now, so I've got um, five ions there in the table, and the way I'm going to do it is we're going to look at the atom configuration first, and then we're going to lose the relevant number of electrons to get the ion. The thing to know is 4S fills before 3D, but 4S is also lost before 3D. So you can think of it as first in, first out in terms of 4S. So scandium 3 plus first, so the atom has this configuration. We need to lose three electrons, so we're going to lose the 4S2s first, and then that 3D1. So the ion just has this configuration here. Titanium 2 plus, so there's the atom. So we need to lose those 4S2 electrons. Remember, first in, first out. So it's argon 3D2. Ion 3 plus, so there's the atom. There's the ion. Copper 2 plus, remember that's one of the dodgy ones. So 3D10, 4S1. So we lose the 4S1, then one of the 3D10, so we get to 3D9. And zinc 2 plus. So it's got that full configuration, 3D10, 4S2. We're going to lose these two, so we get to 3D10. So now we've done this, we can look at the definition for transition elements. So transition elements are defined as having at least one ion with an incomplete D subshell. Now you need to know that scandium only forms the 3 plus ion and zinc only forms the 2 plus ion. So... We've got them in the table here. So scandium 3 plus doesn't have any 3D electrons and zinc 2 plus has a full 3D subshell. So technically they are not classed as transition elements. So we'll move on to the general properties of transition elements now. So these are extra to the generic metallic properties. So we've got, they can show more than one oxidation state in their compounds or you could say variable oxidation state. They can form coloured ions and they can act as catalysts. So we'll just look at each of those in turn now. So we'll start with variable oxidation state. I've just picked a few examples to illustrate the point. So manganese in KMnO4 has a plus 7 oxidation state, whereas the manganese in MnO2 is plus 4. So a couple of vanadium ones now, V in V2O5 is plus 5, whereas in VO2 plus, it's plus 4. And chromium in Cr2O7 2 minus, that's the dichromate ion, plus 6, whereas in this complex ion, CrH2063 plus, it's plus 3. So if you compare that with, say, group 1 and group 2 elements, so sodium in group 1, it can only exhibit the plus 1 oxidation state. And magnesium in group 2 can only exhibit the plus 2 oxidation state. Transition elements, however, they can exhibit variable oxidation states. So coloured ions now, again just a few examples to illustrate the point. So iron, a couple of examples here then. So the complex iron of feh 2062 plus is pale green, whereas the 3 plus version is yellow. Copper. So the CuH2062 plus complex ion is blue, 
whereas the CuCl4 2 minus complex ion is yellow. Chromium now, so the dichromate ion is orange, whereas the CrH2O6 3 plus complex ion is violet, and manganese MnH2O6 2 plus complex is pale pink, very, very pale pink, and the MnO4 minus ion, which you'll probably be familiar with from potassium manganate 7 titrations, is purple. So we'll finish with catalytic activity. So we need to be aware of the fact that there's heterogeneous catalysts and homogeneous catalysts. We'll start with hetero. So that's where the catalyst and the reactants are in different physical states. So a few examples. So in the Haber process, we're reacting nitrogen and hydrogen gas to make ammonia, but the catalyst is a solid, it's iron. Contact process used to make sulfuric acid has a solid V2O5 catalyst. Hydrogenation of alkenes, so when you're turning alkenes into alkanes by reacting them with hydrogen, that's a nickel catalyst. And finally, the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide uses an MnO2 solid catalyst. So how do they work? Well, they work by this uh, mechanism, a three-step mechanism of adsorption, reaction, desorption. So the reactants adsorb, so they bind weakly to the surface of the catalyst. That's where the reaction takes place. And then once the products are formed, they need to leave the surface and that's called desorption. So you can use the acronym HARD to help remember that order. So heterogeneous, adsorption, reaction, desorption. So moving on to homogeneous catalysis now. So that's where the catalyst and reactants are in the same physical state. One example for you. So that's between the aqueous iodide ion and the aqueous peroxidized sulfate ion. So you can see there the catalyst is Fe2 plus and Fe3 plus aqueous. So just looking at those two reactants, I minus and S2O8 2 minus, they're going to struggle to react with each other because they're both negatively charged. So here are the equations and you can write these in any order. So I've started with the S2O8 2 minus ion reacting with the Fe2 plus ions and you can see that they've been oxidized up to Fe3 plus. And then the Fe3 plus ions can react with the I minus ions and give the I2 and reform the Fe2 plus ions. So when you add the two equations together you get all of that which obviously cancels down to the overall equation, which we started with, that looks like that. So how is the iron helping the reaction to go? It's actually using its ability to change its oxidation state. So it's able to handle the electrons and transfer them across.